the inmates of the ark. The ark was completed according to the instructions laid down in the book of Reziel. Noah's next task was gathering in the animals. No less than 32 species of birds and 365 or reptiles he had to take along with him. But God ordered the animals to repair to the ark, and they trooped thither, and Noah did not have to do so much as stretch out a finger. Indeed, more appeared than were required to come, and God instructed him to sit at the door of the ark and note which of the animals lay down as they reached the entrance and which stood. The former belonged in the ark, but not the latter. Taking up his post as he had been commanded, Noah observed a lioness with her two cubs. All three beasts crouched, but the two young ones began to struggle with the mother, and she arose and stood up next to them. Then Noah led the two cubs into the ark. The wild beasts and the cattle and the birds, which was not accepted, remained standing about the ark all of seven days, for the assembling of the animals happened one week before the flood began to descend. On the day whereon they came to the ark, the sun was darkened, and the foundation of the earth trembled, and lightning flashed, and the thunder boomed as never before, and yet the sinners remained impenitent, and not did they change their wicked doings during those last seven days. When finally the flood broke loose, 700,000 of the children of men gathered around the ark and implored Noah to grant them protection. With a loud voice he replied and said, Are ye not those who were rebellious toward God, saying there is no God? Therefore he has brought ruin upon you to annihilate you and destroy you from the face of the earth. Have I not been prophesying this unto you these hundred and twenty years and you will not give heed unto the voice of God? Yet now you desire to be kept alive? Then the sinners cried out, So be it. We all are ready now to turn back to God. If only thou would open the door of thy ark to receive us, that we may live and not die. Noah made answer and said, That ye do now when your need presses hard upon you. Why did you not turn to God during all the hundred and twenty years which the Lord appointed unto you at the term of repentance? Now do ye come and ye speak thus because distress besets your lives? Therefore God will not hearken unto you and give you ear. Not will you accomplish the crowd of sinners tried to take the entrance to the ark by storm. But the wild beasts keeping watch around the ark set upon them and many were slain, while the rest escaped, only to meet death in the waters of the flood. The water alone could not have made an end of them, for they were giants in statue and strength. When Noah threatened them with the scourge of God, they would make reply. If the water of the flood came from above, they would never reach up to our necks. And if they come from below, the soles of our feet are large enough to dam up the springs. But God bade each drop pass through Gehenna before it fell to earth. And the hot rain scalded the skin of the sinners. The punishment that overtook them was befitting their crime. As their sensual desires had made them hot and inflamed them to immoral excesses, so they were chastised by means of heated water. 
Not even in the hour of the death struggle could the sinners suppress their vile instincts. When the water began to stream up out of the springs, they threw their little children into them to choke the flood. It was by the grace of God, not on account of his merits, that Noah found shelter in the ark before the overwhelming force of the waters. Although he was better than his contemporaries, he was yet not worthy of having wonders done for his sake. He had so little faith that he did not enter the ark until the waters had risen to his knees. With him his pious wife, Nama, the daughter Enoch of Enosh escaped the peril and his three sons and the wives of his three sons. Noah had not married until he was 498 years old. Then the Lord had bidden him to take a wife unto himself. He had not desired to bring children into the world, seeing that they would all have to perish in the flood, and he had only three sons born unto him shortly before the deluge came. God had given him so small a number of offspring that he might be spared the necessity of building the ark on an over-large scale in case they turned out to be pious. And if not, if they too were depraved like the rest of their generation, sorrow over their destruction would but be increased in proportion to their number. As Noah and his family were the only ones not to have a share in the corruptness of the age, so the animals received into the ark were such as had led a natural life. For the animals of the time were as immoral as the men, the dog united with the wolf, the cock with the peafowl, and many others paid no heed to sexual purity. Those that were saved were such as had kept themselves untainted. Before the flood, the number of unclean animals had been greater than the number of the clean. After the ratio was reversed, because while seven pairs of clean animals were preserved in the ark, but two pairs of the unclean were preserved. One animal, the reem, Noah could not take into the ark. On account of its huge size, it could not find room therein. Noah therefore tied it to the ark, and it ran on behind. Also, he could not make space for the giant Og, the king of Bashan. He sat on top of the ark securely, and in this way escaped the flood of waters. Noah doled out his food to him daily through a hole because Og had promised that he and his descendants would serve him as slaves in perpetuity. Two creatures of a most peculiar kind also found refuge in the ark. Among the beings that came to Noah, there was falsehood asking for shelter. He was denied admission because he had no companion. And Noah was taking in the animals only by pairs. Falsehood went off to seek a partner, and he met misfortune, whom he associated with himself on the condition that she might appropriate what falsehood earned. The pair were then accepted in the ark. When they left it, falsehood noticed that whatever he gathered together disappeared at once and he betook himself to his companion to seek an explanation, which he gave him in the following words, Did we not agree to the condition that I might take what you earn? And falsehood had to depart empty-handed.